Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. In this particular video, we are going to talk about most repeated topics in CSRNet which are asked from inorganic chemistry. Now, I have already made a video on a similar topic for physical chemistry, like most repeated topics in CSRNet exam from physical chemistry. In case if you have not watched that video, I would highly recommend you to watch that. Uh, the link is there in the i button. And most of you have requested me to make similar video for inorganic and organic. So here is a video on inorganic chemistry. So let's quickly dig into it. Uh, see, for when we talk about inorganic chemistry, it has changed a lot, okay? How questions have been asked from inorganic chemistry, that has changed a lot, especially in the last two exams, okay? So although what I am going to talk about is an average of like previous 10 exams, but you should like try to utilize and try to understand how questions have been asked in last two exams okay so question uh, the way of asking question has changed in last two exams but it is not necessary that that is going to be repeated this time as well like you are going to get similar type of questions okay so you should be prepared with everything that's why we will be talking about topics here and in another video i will be talking about what type of questions we can expect from inorganic chemistry okay and we will do a detailed analysis of like last two exams when the way of inorganic chemistry or the way of questions from inorganic chemistry has changed okay so that will be another video so stay tuned for that subscribe to the channel to watch that video let's quickly start with it okay so the first topic which i will talk about is like coordination chemistry we all know coordination chemistry is the topic which covers almost like 30 to 40 percent of your inorganic chemistry syllabus and there are a lot of topics in this okay it's a huge topic but i have pointed out some topics or some portions which definitely you need to study so that you can cover questions from them so starting from the first topic which is crystal field theory so not only just the theory but you should know how to solve questions related to crystal field theory how the splitting of orbital takes place uh, like uh, in different uh, like geometries uh, like for octahedral tetrahedral not only these but in square planar and different arrangements like uh, trigonal prism how the d orbital is split in that and what is the reason for that not just re remembering the things but you should understand the reason for that what is the energy difference how to calculate delta o and uh, like uh, la like lambda max and all the different parameters or calculation based upon that so these things comes under uh, crystal field theory next thing is spectrochemical series you cannot do coordination chemistry without knowing a spectrochemical series without uh, understanding which are uh, ligand like strong field ligands weak field ligands and which are sigma donor ligands uh, pi acceptor ligands pi donor ligands so you should know about these ligands why they are called so and how they are being categorized how they affect the the like uh, the interaction between metal and ligand how they are affected which basically you study in molecular orbital theory so yeah uh, then john teller uh, effect which comes as additional part of your uh, crystal field effect or crystal field theory so how uh, the geometry of the complex affects the repulsion between ligand and metal uh, orbitals and how the how the orbitals get more or less uh, separate the degen ratio of the energy level how it takes place in the case of different geometries so that is john teller effect and you should know that how it is uh, performed for tetragonally elongated tetragonally compressed complexes so yeah look upon that okay then orgel diagram uh, like you should definitely do orgel diagram and tanabe suganu diagram both orgel diagram is minimum that you have to do because you can definitely expect a question from orgel diagram uh, questions based upon uh, different geometries and the energy uh, levels and then how many peaks you can expect in the spectra these types of questions have been asked to like twist this topic and to ask question in more depth okay then comes molecular orbital theory as i was telling like how these ligand interact with the molecular orbital or how these ligand interact with the metal com metal orbitals and how these like uh, extra electrons in the valence shell of ligands how they are interacting with these orbitals that comes under molecular orbital theory and how molecular orbital theory uh, uh, like it uh, explains or it it tries to satisfies everything which you study in crystal field theory so whatever you study in the next theory crystal field theory is the basic theory ligand field theory crystal field theory then comes molecular orbital theory so molecular orbital theory should be able to explain everything that you have studied in crystal field theory okay so you should study in that way okay next thing is color and spectra this actually comes with crystal field theory like uh, how a particular complex is of a particular color what is color wheel and how this color arises then spectra of like how many bands you can expect in the atomic spectra of a particular uh, like uh, complex 
uh, in over here only selection rules comes like uh, Laporte allowed, uh, spin allowed transitions and all the other things. Then comes your magnetic properties here, like how a metal complex is categorized in different type of uh, like magnetic properties like ferromagnetism, the paramagnetism, diamagnetism, Curie law. Okay, so these things comes under magnetic properties and that needs to be done over here. How to calculate effective uh, like that uh, effective magnetic moment that also is an important part of it uh, like where your uh, orbital contribution will be calculated where not that thing should be clear and I have made a video on this so you can watch them okay if not you can just watch the videos where I have solved questions of inorganic chemistry and you will see a lot of things has been covered in that video itself then your charge transfer spectra ligand to metal charge transfer metal to ligand charge transfer this is one question which you can expect either in two marks or four marks so yeah, charge transfer spectra. There are other also like metal to metal charge transfer and uh, ligand to ligand charge transfer. So that needs to be done. Then your electron transfer reaction, different reactions in coordination chemistry, SN1 reaction, SN2 reactions. How do they take place? Uh, like outer orbital reaction, inner orbital reaction. So these things needs to be done in under this electron transfer reaction and isomerism. You cannot expect direct question from isomerism, but there could be a simple easy question from isomerism so you should know uh, what are isomerism in coordination chemistry these are something which comes like basics which you study in bachelors okay so you should be aware about it okay then magnetic properties under magnetic properties as i said you need to study paramagnetism diamagnetism spin only formula then orbital contribution these things needs to be done in very detailed because you can expect a question from this topic okay then comes the next major topic of uh, inorganic chemistry, which is organometallic compounds or organometallic chemistry. Over here, you have to study 18 electron rule, isoluble analogy, okay, then carbenes, Fischer and Schrock carbene, what is the difference between them, their spin states, and all the things related to them, okay. Uh, synergistic effect, how synergistic effect affect the uh, spectra of the complex, uh, how it affects the bond length of a metal uh, uh, like organometallic complex so you should be aware about this okay so study about that weights rule you can definitely get a question from weights rule it has been asked on a repetitive manner like questions based upon weights rule uh, like uh, to predict uh, what type of a particular bor uh, like borane or carborane is and uh, like there is a shortcut trick i have discussed on the channel just search a uh, weights rule and write down the name of the channel all about chemistry and you will get the video it's an old video but i have explained weights rule in a very detailed manner if you watch that video i don't think you need to study it again or study it from other source okay that will be enough for the preparation of weights rule then reaction mechanism there are different reaction mechanism which comes under organometallic compound uh, like associative dissociative reaction then you have uh, beta hydride elimination and all the things all these type of reaction mechanism so that needs to be done and trans effect uh, there have been a lot of questions asked uh, in two marks especially from trans effect so you should know the series how this trans effect affect uh, the organometallic com compound if a particular uh, reaction is given to you you should be able to know that which ligand is going to apply the trans effect and the ligand trans to it is going to get eliminated uh, especially uh, like cis platin uh, related reactions so you should be aware about them okay next comes your periodic properties now we are going towards s block and p block elements basically main group elements so this is a uh, part of main group uh, main uh, group elements so atomic radius trend ionization energy trend electron affinity trend electronegativity trend uh, diagonal relationship trend so cover all these things this is a huge topic but this is minimum which you should cover okay um, then comes your chemical bonding and molecular orbital theory uh, now here you this is basically about the diatomic uh, molecule so yeah linear combination of atomic orbitals then uh, homonuclear and heteronuclear diatomic molecule how the anti bonding and bonding orbitals are arranged then a bond order how to calculate bond order and properties based upon bond order so how bond order affect bond strength how it affect bond length so that should be covered and molecular orbital theory energy diagram of these homonuclear and heteronuclear diatomic molecule 
all right next thing is your reaction mechanism in coordination chemistry now this should be this slide should be a little before it but let nevertheless this is also a topic from coordination chemistry i already covered this but yeah these are the reaction mechanisms which you have to study sn1 sn2 reaction of complexes then associative dissociative pathways and trans effect i have been already telling you about it okay next is main group chemistry so consider the previous two three slides which we have discussed like periodicity and all that also comes under main group chemistry but at least you should do these topics from main group like p block anomalies like what are the differences in p block for example in the nitrogen family how nitrogen is different from all others uh, in the oxygen family how oxygen is different from all others and what is the reason behind it okay that needs to be done or in the boron family how boron is different or how aluminum is different from others and what are their different properties or what are the different characteristics they have that needs to be done differently then hydrides of different uh, like uh, p block elements uh, like uh, hydrides of uh, aluminium hydrides of uh, carbon so hydride of lead so what are their properties uh, how they behave in uh, like in water or in the aqueous medium that needs to be studied oxide and oxo acids these are uh, like oxides of phosphorus oxo acids of sulfur these are certain topics which needs to be done i think i have covered many of them on the youtube channel itself just search for the topic along with the name of channel and you will get this topic okay and then interhalogen compounds this is very important topic if you are covering ma main group element so interhalogen compounds their structure their properties okay so like if7 what is the uh, hybridization of if7 what is the structure of if7 which bonds how many bonds are on the equatorial side how many are on the axial sides which orbitals are involved so you should be uh, studied the, these topics in detail not only if7 but all the interhalogen compounds okay so it is a very important topic okay next small topic is acid and base or certain theories associated with acid and base like hard soft acid base theory then your pearson concept uh, then your lux flood concept and your sanovich concept so try to cover all these if you are studying acid and base so generally you will get a question from hard and soft acid and base but these other topics or these other theories or concepts which i have mentioned try to cover them they are not big they are just small small concepts if you know them you could be able to like if the question is asked from a different perspective or if a question is asked in two marks at least you will be able to do so two mark questions are more important nowadays because you don't have much options in part b right you have to do 35 out of 40 so you cannot leave a lot of questions over there so yeah now try to cover as many topics especially these small topics from inorganic chemistry next is your inorganic spectroscopy again a very important topic from inorganic chemistry which is inorganic spectroscopy so uh, ir of complexes how the co length or how the synergistic effect affects the ir of these complexes especially like how many ir bands you are going to get for a metal carbonyl or metal nitrosyl that is a very important concept how uh, the shift of this carbonyl peak takes place uh, when the metal uh, has a certain ligand or when the metal is changed or when there is a synergistic effect so everything related to that is very important concept okay then electronic spectra which is actually a part of coordination chemistry where you study different selection rules and whether a particular transition will be allowed or not uh, yeah so selection rules are important and then nmr of complexes now when you study nmr of complexes you study phosphorus nmr uh, you study uh, carbon nmr nitrogen nmr proton nmr so these are the different nmrs which you study apart from what you study for organic chemistry so for inorganic chemistry nmr of these complexes are important and here also there is a concept of satellite peak which comes with nmr of the complexes and that is again very important because uh, satellite peaks have been asked various times on in previous few years of csr net exam so you should know how a satellite peak is found what gives you or how to basically identify a satellite peak just search for satellite peak and all about chemistry and you will get a video where, where i have explained this concept then mosbor spectroscopy again important concept when we talk about inorganic spectroscopy next uh, and probably some of the small topics of inorganic chemistry is bio inorganic chemistry it's again a huge topic but at least try to do hemoglobin and myoglobin from here try to do electron transfer of proteins like how electron transfer takes place in proteins and uh, try to do metal enzymes also try to do like metallocyanins okay 
uh, and last topic is your nuclear chemistry so nuclear chemistry also comes in physical chemistry but when we talk about inorganic there are certain parts of nuclear chemistry which are as like radioactive decay then half life related things these two topics are actually similar to what you study in physical chemistry so you can study them combined in physical chemistry uh, then nuclear fission and fusion reaction how uh, uh, like how a nuclear reaction takes place that is a part of an organic chemistry so uh, electron capture or a positron capture what you can expect as the product that is and how to balance a reaction like nuclear reaction that comes under inorganic nuclear chemistry and then radioactive equilibria so basically balancing a nuclear reaction so these are certain topics from uh, your inorganic chemistry which i believe are important and it, you should consider them as a tick mark when you are preparing and when you are studying inorganic chemistry at least these are the things which you need to do and inorganic chemistry is a huge topic the more you study this topic is nothing like you have to uh, like there is no limit of it okay you cannot just say that okay i have studied this topic and this is complete no there will be always something left out in it so try to maximize and prepare as much as possible at least try to do previous year's question we have our own ebook in case if you want you can buy that ebook that ebook contains solution of all the previous years starting from csir june 2011 till csir december 2024 exam so all the previous exams are covered in that particular ebook purchase that you will get detailed solution in that ebook and with that you can prepare a lot of things for the upcoming csir net exam so that's it from my side for this particular video guys thank you so much for watching and i will be making a video for organic chemistry as well so stay tuned for that i will be making a video of analysis of previous few years uh, for changing pattern of inorganic chemistry definitely uh, stay tuned for that and we will be also discussing about last one month strategy for csnet so stay tuned for that as well so that's it from my side see you guys in the next video take care and keep learning all the best for your preparation